Hello everyone and welcome to another high elo game of Age of Empires. Today we put the baby to sleep, mixed some gunpowder into our coke, did a line of brown brown and are now amped up to watch MBL playing as the Turks in red take on Hera playing as the Portuguese in blue. Now while the players heard their hurdles explore their immediate surroundings with llamas and with scouts and try to get their butts up to feudal age ASAP, why don't we take a look at the Civ matchup, explosive as it is, that we are going to be watching today. Now, the Turks are a civilization built around their love of gunpowder. Turkish gunpowder units are created faster, have extra HP, come with cheaper technologies, and some of their gunpowder units can be upgraded to get extra range. Now, staying on brand, a unique unit of the Turks is the Janissary, a more expensive, overall less accurate hand cannoneer, but one that comes with more HP, a better attack, and more armor. However, no attack bonus against infantry like the hand cannoneer. Now, to support these heavy but expensive units on the battlefield, the Turks can field some pretty interesting, cool, decent supporting units of their own. Their scout line units come with extra pierce armor. Their cav archers can be upgraded to get more HP, and their scout line units automatically upgrade to light cavalry and to hussars once they reach castle and imperial age, which means the Turks hit the ground running in castle and in imperial with top-of-the-line light cavalry raiding slash attacking units. Now, in order to be able to afford their gunpowder units, which are pretty expensive, Turkish gold miners mo work 20% faster. They get the chemistry upgrade for free, and the free upgrade I just mentioned from scout to light calf to hussar does save them 1,300 resources. Now, taking a look on the right side of the map, perhaps you want to call it the eastern portion of the map, we've got the Portuguese a civilization whose economic bonuses allow it to take advantage of its strong gunpowder units. To start with, to get an early game boost to their economy, Portuguese foragers, although we don't really see any out right now, also generate wood while they collect berries. All Portuguese units cost less gold, including, by the way, gunpowder units. All of their technologies are researched faster, except for going up to the next age. And once you hit Imperial, you can build your unique structure, the Feitoria. This is an economic building that auto-generates all four resources, but does take up 20 population space. Now, using all of these bonuses, these features, the Portuguese can field an impressive gunpowder-based army since they have access to every single gunpowder, I should say non-unique gunpowder unit in the game on both land and sea. And I'm looking, we've got a little bit of sea here, a little bit of an inland lake. Uh, wouldn't mind seeing some cannon galleons positioned in this uh, water defending this small group of shorefish. Now, the Portuguese can also upgrade all of their gunpowder units to fire more accurately at moving targets and increase the speed of their projectiles, which strongly benefits their unique unit, the organ gun. This is a gunpowder siege unit that actually fires five or six bullets in a small spread designed to hit multiple targets at once and does come with a small attack bonus against infantry and skirmishers as well as buildings. By the way, what am I... Uh... Oh, Hera. Did Hera miss a... a... One second. Did Hera miss a llama? Uh-oh. Llama, llama, ding dong. Uh-oh. That's very sour. Usually I like to point out when players miss relics. I wonder if Hera notices. For now, it kind of looks like he does didn't. I was wondering what this little tiny, what color is this on the mini map? Light green? Light gray? I'm not too sure. I think it's kind of light greenish. I was wondering why there was just one standing here. Not something you generally see, unless it's of the last of us here, this last remaining deer. But I did see his scout unit moving here. In any event, we'll see if Hera realizes that, hey, wait a second. I'm short 100 food. Something's up. While the players both click up to feudal, Hera's already en route with 18 villagers. Looks like our Turk still needs 50 more food. Probably will gather that right as Loom completes. Who's kidding who? Let's see. Five, four, three. Yeah. And now we're going to see the Roman numeral too. Okay. So good time for us as the players head up to feudal and lose control of... Man, what is going on with the deer? They are stubborn on Arabia. Good time for us to look at the bases. Let's zoom out. Apologies to anyone on a smaller screen. MBL2, Forward Forests, an easy wall off going for a bit of a land grab is our Turk, who instead of just walling off here, walls off this area, but that does allow him to keep his wood lumberjacks. I was going to say wood miners, but that's not right. His lumberjacks pretty safe from any kind of archer fire, so a good move to push out. That being said, it is a very far distance from his down center. His primary gold, nice and secure in the back. Primary stone exposed annoyingly on a hill. Uh, this is going to be annoying to mine. Additional gold in the front. 
additional gold to the top and where is his secondary stone pile right here to the back and he also has a few more forests in the rear position so three forests for him pretty damn far from his town center and Hera now discovers exactly where his opponent is as he finds the main source of gold he finds the lumber camp and here we go he's still scouting with his llama he knows he missed something the question is what will Hera send here will he do downtime for a villager will he just wait until the scout gets home I'm very curious I don't know why I'm so invested in this neutral llama speaking of our neutral llama let's take a look at Hera's base also three forests I feel like these forests are much closer to his base though I mean this is a pretty shorter distance than this MBL's forests are way way far away as he moves in and out, discovers where his opponent is, and he gets walled. Spearman, Spearman, can he do it? No. Hera, <laughs> just a, literally a fraction of a second, a millisecond too slow. His gold very exposed to the front. His stone very exposed to the front. Ooh, I don't like these resource placements for our Portuguese at all. And MBL again housed for a, a hot minute there. Ooh, he is just getting housed left, right, and center recently. Additional gold for our Portuguese out front additional gold off to the side and where is his extra stone off to the north so in terms of wall offs both of these bases pretty damn open but i would give the advantage in terms of gold to mbl everything else pretty much hera i mean they both have their forward stones they both have forests but hera's forests are much closer i mean this is what five or six tiles here whereas mbl's forests are what eight nine ten tiles away doesn't really matter though both players not exactly noobs are already beginning to wall off their bases looks like Hera the wide expanse to the south of his base is getting closed off using a bit of that stone to create part of the wall off and let's see what's happening here he is moving forward with archers with spearmen with this one scout oh the villager the villager's gonna get caught out the wall off not able it looks like we're about to get our first kill the question is for who? Will it be the scout? Will it be the villager? What the hell is going on? It is the villager and it is Hera who gets the first kill of the game. And this is how this is how my brain works, FYI. While this battle is still going on, my eyes for some reason are darting to the mini map to see that that llama is still there. But MBL's cleared up this entire aggression. Um, I mean, he lost three villagers, but on the whole, he uh, that's it. <laughs> there's no more blue dots streaming across the minimap and there's no blue dot heading here to the back for the love of god man collect this llama you've seen it has mbl seen it no he has not he hasn't even explored the far reaches of the portuguese base as both players disengage look at Hera's villager lead because of those three kills he is up four villagers instead of one but his army count is smaller and on the whole weaker Spearmen and archers versus skirmishers and scouts. Skirmishers pretty good counter to everything that Hera has at the moment. And now MBL, seeing that there's no follow-up attack, feels free to go and explore out onto the map. Why the hell not? You notice your opponent isn't doing some anything, to be honest. So go and see what is going on with your opponent's base. What is he planning? What is he going for? Usually these structures... For, uh, military structures form part of a wall off so you can get a good sense of what your opponent is doing that being said Hera has snuck in a stable here right in the center right in the back behind these houses and MBL has not seen it yet oh my god oh my god it oh no the, the llama the llama got got ah man the llama got got I was gonna say MBL is gonna get that llama but what the hell got it it must be the scout and there it is underneath the town center at the 15 and a half minute mark of the game. If this ever happens to you, don't feel bad because as you can see, it can happen to literally anyone. We've got a skirmisher behind a house attacking a house. We've got a few scouts trying to bust their way in here. But without archers, these villagers are going to be pretty damn good at getting these structures up. At the same time, Hera pushes out with four archers of his own. MBL to the north, e west, MBL to the north, MBL to the east. MBL is literally in three different locations. Hera, though, has kind of just stopped with his archers. We'll see what he plans on doing with them. And like I said, the fact that these are skirmishers means that they're not going to kill the villagers, especially not two skirmishers. I don't think even four skirmishers, but really doesn't matter. Uh, Hera says, you know what? You tried to bust in. I tried to keep you out, but now I'm going to delete my own palisade wall because I finally have numerical advantage here. Rather, the numerical advantage. 
And so he pushes out. MBL has to get the hell out of here, even though he has, again, in my opinion, the better army. Three scouts to three. Ah, oh, <laughs> Tiger joins in as well. Even though one of his scouts is uh, borderline dead. And the Jaguar ultimately dies. And oh, this is a good get here for our Portuguese who's going to discover a random Turkish skirmisher. By the way, remember, this is as good as it gets for the Turks. They do not, famously do not, get elite skirmishers. Their trash units, aside from their Hussars, which are, I mean... Uh, they come with extra pierce armor, but beyond that, pretty pretty standard hussars. There's no pike, there's no halbs, there's no elite skirmishers. The fact that you get the upgrade for free is a huge deal, but once you do, that is the last and only trash unit that the Turks have. A very gold intensive army, if I may say so myself, as now MBL clears up. But why are his skirmishers attacking the scout? Why are they not attacking the archers? And why are they in this pit? of despair why are they here on the low ground i guess he doesn't really care as the reinforcements come oh and look at Hera. the game sense is absolutely incredible out of both of these players of the three scouts he focuses on the one weaker one and still manages to get the kill evens up the kill count 12 kills a piece although Hera still has those three villager kills which means economically he's ahead three villagers down for army count let's take a look I see both players have gotten their secondary prerequisite structures. We know there's a stable. We know there's an archery range. Is there a blacksmith? Of course there is. Ooh, MBL is going to be so annoying here to the back of the Portuguese base as he moves in. I don't know if this is necessarily a <laughs> clump of units you really want to chase. Both players heading up to Castle Age literally six seconds apart. Our Turk uh, expanding in what I would call maybe a pancake shaped base Hera has created himself a pretty interesting little mr yo style nook here a a, a self-contained city state for the portuguese and our turk doing the same although kind of squished this is uh i don't know it kind of reminds me it's like Hera's base if somebody sat on it you know at the top there and squished it and anyway i'm gonna stop being silly we've got a market going up we know there's a stable there's an archery range. Does he have his blacksmith? Of course he does. And look at this little nook he's created for these gold miners. Fantastic play out of both players so far. Kill count's not exactly anything to write home about at the 20-minute mark of the game, but I uh, I expect this game to ramp up. I said it yesterday. Or maybe not. I shouldn't say yesterday. Uh, I, I do have a schedule of when I want to release certain videos, but the schedule doesn't always work out. So either yesterday or maybe tomorrow, I will say... But these two players have been just ripping into each other the last few days, and they have just been playing endlessly. And honestly, I know um, I, I know MBL made a, a tweet or an, uh, what, what do you call it now? It used to be he tweeted. Now it's what did he do? He X'd something about how he didn't feel great about his performance, his gameplay. He wasn't feeling at 100 percent. Honestly, if you watch the games that I'm, I'm casting and I, I hope you do. And I hope you tell everyone you know about the games that I'm casting. I I don't see it. Sure, mistakes are made. Sure, things are over overlooked. Houses don't get built on time and things like that. But the level of gameplay out of these two is just absolutely redonkulous. As a second town center goes up for our Portuguese. And knights are now out as well as the archers become crossbows. Let's see how our Turk plans to defend this. Uh, <laughs> another Jaguar. Okay, our Turk plans to defend it with numbers. Ooh, and I missed the second MBL hit Castle Age to zoom in on a few scouts as they automatically became light cavalry units. These skirmishers with their zero kills, but again, they're here to just be annoying, and eventually I guess they will kill if Hera's not careful enough. Camels for our Turk, or I should say Camel Singular, as four more are in the production tab, but not yet out. He's got a monk to zone out the knights, which I'm assuming he's going to do right now. Oh no, oh no. Okay, not terrible. Not terrible for either player here. So again, let's see how this battle shapes up. I suspect the red is going to clean up handily. Although I would love for his camels to engage into the knights as opposed to the crossbows. But yeah, he cleans that up very handily. Does he keep his knight alive? No, he does not. So loses a monk? Loses a knight. There it is. There's that knight's body. 
noticeable with the different colored pantaloons. A second town center for our Turk, who now pushes out. Hera did not put the wall back up. This rainforest shrub is... <laughs> I mean, keeping the camel company? The third town center going up right next to the gold. A monk. Will he get the conversion before he dies? No, he does not. Another monk bites the dust, but it's okay. He got a spearman. A monk for a spearman. Pretty good trade. JK. And our Turk takes the kill lead 26 to 22. Still hasn't gotten a single villager kill as he takes a relic. Is that the first? One, two, three, four. Yeah, no, that's the first relic being taken out on the map. What are you? I'm assuming a very low health scout. So Hera has seen all the relics except this one. Oh my goodness. The vision today for Hera. <laughs> He is having a few issues here, and speaking of issues, why does he keep choosing to engage with his knights, which are nothing special, into camels that come with a plus nine attack against them? Shores up his defenses, decides, you know what, F it, I'm just going to build a house here. Forget the palisade walls. These are not human palisades wall with extra HP. Another town center. So both players are going to be sitting on three town center. It is now our Portuguese who is ahead. Ten villagers. And the game sense, how did he know to move forward with this light slash scout cavalry unit to move out at this exact moment? And by the way, if this was a Turkish unit, he could probably engage with these villagers. I don't even know that MBL should wall this off. You might want to invite an engagement because this is just a scout and four villagers are going to kill a scout pretty damn quickly. But look at that movement speed, 1.71. Not even the camel is that fast, so this scout is going to get the hell out of here as Hera pushes in yet again and gets another monk snipe, but which monk got this? I don't think it was the forward monk. I think it was the backward monk. Loses another knight to a conversion. Uh, okay, now MBL chasing a stronger unit with a weaker unit. What is the HP? Does he see something we don't know? This is 674 HP against 633. A stronger attack, better armor. Get the hell out of here, MBL. You do not want to chase, especially not into this uh, settlement. Both players gathering their armies. Our Turk, 50% bigger army, but now he's down 15 villagers. That is a 30% smaller economy as Hera has busted the initial walls of his settlement. Now he's going pikemen? Not, I mean, not terror. I shouldn't sound, <laughs> I shouldn't sound so judgmental. That that came out way more judgmental than I intended it to be. Bikeman? No, I, I just meant he's got cavalry. He seems like he wants to slow down the game at a moment when he shot should probably be ramping up the game, especially because our Turk. I mean, not that Ahara knows this, but our Turk is less than a hundred stone away from dropping a big, fat, juicy Turkish castle. Uh, okay, never mind. He just got the resources and now is moving out with villagers. Ooh, I don't know about this location. I don't know about this location. Maybe a little bit further south. Maybe over here to get the military industrial complex, but it doesn't really matter. Hera pushing out through the south doesn't see this. These are not Frankish knights that have extra line of sight, but what he does have good line of sight with is these structures. And so he sees that castle going up immediately moves forward, but... Will he lose two more knights? No! Holy shit, the RNG is not in MBL's favor at the moment. Even though he did get two conversions, that's what, five or six knights that he lost? Where are these villagers going? They are sacrificing themselves. They are presenting juicy targets for the Portuguese. Here and now rushing to get more stone of his own, 300 stone. Will he just buy it? and plop down a defensive castle of his own, or will he do what Hera loves to do, which is when he comes under attack, he flips the script and goes on the offensive and loses another knight. Okay, so RNG, not terrible, not terrible. Maybe I overreacted as the Turk busts into the Portuguese base. And now a whole bunch of villagers have to run the hell away. This is all of a sudden 21 villagers that are not exactly technically idle, but not exactly technically useful either. Secondary wall off already up for our poor, uh, Turk, rather. And honestly, MBL, this is fantastic. Not a single ranged unit in this Portuguese army, with the exception of the monks, who do have full health, uh, faith, rather, on all three of them. But because these are melee, 
It's going to take Hera a while to bust in here. At the same time, these light cab are now slaughtering five villager kills to three. And MBL takes not only the total kill lead, but also the villager kill lead. But now he's got to be careful. There are pikemen here. This castle shelling away at the town center. Where are his camels, by the way? Oh, they're still here. And Hera just now busts into the front of MBL's base. His one knight, two knight are trying to kill as many villagers as possible. As Does MBL see this? Does he notice... Oh, this is open. Ay, ay, ay. Uh oh. Uh oh. MBL reacts a little bit too slowly, but I don't think Hera got a villager kill there. He forgot about the villager. Now he goes back and he gets it. Oh, man. This is like the llama of villagers. He just gets the last tip of it. But all of a sudden, there's Janissaries in the castle. There's villagers in the castle. Another melee and counter melee wall off. But look at this MBL's base. It's a ghost town. More than a third of his economy is doing nothing. Hera's villager lead is bonkers. It's 26 villagers ahead. Although now it's Hera's turn to have 30 idle villagers as these hussars. He hits Imperial lead. I'm very excited. I stuttered over myself as the light cap became hussars. That was just an absolute lucky break there for me to catch that. I mean, our Turk suddenly has three castles. Suddenly Janissaries. Suddenly Imperial Age. Hera does have the resources in a minute to go up to Imperial. But where are the Trebs? There is the Treb. One is going to pop out. Not that he really needs to worry about any of these structures. Doesn't really see Hera's castle either. And the Treb pops out. Uh, looks a little to the left. Looks a little to the right. What is it going to go after? Most likely the town center, if I had to guess. Although probably should go after some more military structures at the moment. Big, fiery ball moves into attack position. And oh man, Hera, uh, you might want to do something with these monks. MBL has secured his base. Hera's ahead 25 villagers, but that lead isn't as big as it seems since there's a whole bunch of villagers just moving around and they're not included in the idol count, by the way. So there were seven idols plus a whole bunch of villagers, eight more moving around. That's 15 villagers not doing anything, which is basically MBL's lead, uh, rather uh, Hera's lead here. And what the actual hell is going on? MBL has penetrated the Portuguese base, but he himself is now getting uh, penetrated, for lack of a better word. And there's another castle going up. Oh, my God. Is this open? Is this open? Oh, lucky for MBL. There's still just a little tiny bit of wood left on those stumps. Janissaries on patrol might want to move them this way. Might want to get the additional upgrades for your range slash castle oh no oh this is sour here why did mbl tether the camels which move i'm trying to click it uh one point it's still just 1.6 to 1.65 slowed down the hussars the hussars probably could have gotten one villager but now look at all these pikemen zoning out the entirety of the attack here as knights pop out but man oh man so MBL not really noticing. Otherwise, I'm sure he would have moved his Janissaries into the castle firing range just like this. But all of a sudden, MBL's attack, he's pivoted. He's gone southward. And Hera's attack on MBL's base has done absolutely nothing. The two houses fall, but behind them, there's a whole bunch of walls. So MBL doing an amazing job keeping his settlement safe. Didn't lose a single unit. Wow, gets all the monks, all three of them lie dead, surrounded by Hussar bodies. Pikemen, 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 just moving around a little bit here, a little bit there. Meanwhile, look at Hera's base, the guts. He's been gutted. This is like the Velociraptor in uh, Jurassic Park. When Sam Neill, what's his, a uh, Professor Grant, talks about how Velociraptors hunt, how they slice you open and all your guts fall out. This is what happened to Hera's base. His main town center's gone. Got a bunch of mills doing nothing. Waiting for Don Quixote to show up to tilt with them. But opposing castles are showing up. And Hera, does he seem perturbed by the fact that his uh, OG original settlement was gutted? No, look at him. Look at his settlement. He's just expanded everywhere. But this, this is ripe for Turkish raiding. Because look at how open this base is. You've got villagers over here undefended. Villagers over here undefended. Villagers over here undefended. And even those next to a town center are not that defended at all against the speed of the Hussars. 
Hera just now clicks up to Imperial as our Turk gets Bombard Towers. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. MBL though, he needs to raid. He needs to do something. He's gotta, he's gotta get a move on. This is not gonna cut it. Attacking a uh, scaffolded house is not gonna cut it. Attacking a mill is not gonna cut it. Has he seen how far Hera's expanded? Yes, he has. So why is MBL not on a warpath with Hussars right now? His base is secure. He's got plenty of room for farming. How many castles does he have, by the way? I'm going to zoom out. Apologies to uh, smaller screens. Five castles to the two of the Portuguese as the first treb on the southern banks of this castle pops out. Hera is still a minute and a half away from Imperial. These Janissaries are going to be able to kill, oh, maybe two knights. There we go, the two knights. Maybe three? No, not three. Man, is their power offset by their slow attack. There's always something, you know, in Age of Empires. I've said this before, and I'll stand by it. I'll say it for as long as I live. There is no perfect unit in this game. The stronger they are, the more the developers compensate with some kind of weakness. And look at this Bombard Cannon, all safe and snug in here. But what's it attacking? Knights that are moving out of the way, and their Bombard Towers are up. Okay, this castle, saving grace. It is on the high ground but against a Bombard Tower. When's the last time we saw a Bombard Tower attacking with 13 range attacking a castle and the castle goes down? That being said, we've got a Knight here attacking this castle that a yet again, look at this, does not have the ability to defend itself as Cavaliers, Halberdiers, armor upgrades, conscription being researched for our Portuguese he is getting ready to ramp shit up. The problem is, there's already a bit of an infrastructure here. MBL is playing incredibly aggressive. Uh, no, <laughs> I'm so sorry. Incredibly defensive. He's pushing out with a tower push. Now, remember, we did see Hera recently play as the Turks against Hart, who played as the Slavs. So maybe Hera has gained some kind of insights into the Turkish civilization here. Oh, the house. MBL spreads his villagers too thin. The Cavaliers just puncture right through that house under construction. Get a treb, get a first BBC. They're going to get the second one as well. But honestly, uh, that is a costly, costly get there for Hera. That entire body of Cavaliers is now dead right as he gets a few more villagers and begins to shell away at these bombard cannons towers rather how is this castle still up i was for sure without murder holes that that one knight would have killed him but look at mbl i i i don't mind this i love this but he needs to push he is nibbling at the edge at the very edge of the portuguese base He's got to penetrate. He's got to run inside. He's got to do some rear ending of his own as another Treb falls. These Cavaliers are putting in the work for our Portuguese. They are fully upgraded, and this is as good as it gets for the Portuguese. There is no Paladin, but you know what? 140 HP Cavalier attacking on a 16 isn't bad either, especially not when backed up by a whole bunch of Halberdiers. Three Bombards are here and now he's attacking the castle again another castle being attacked by another bombard tower and Hera is starting to pump out light cavalry oh goodness please dear players don't break my neck as I crane to the left to the right to the up to the down as I try to watch all the different insanity that's happening and emerging out on the map uh okay siege workshop here now the light have say, you know what? I'm not going to just let you take my gold. But MBL is not doing critical damage. Okay, the Bombard will get... Do they only need two shots when they're on the high ground? No. Right? They still need three. Look at that. Oh my god, three HP left. Hera now loses his trebuchets, which means our Turk is moving forward with another tower. These villagers all die. But you know what? A 50 food villager for an 80 food light cavalry unit is not a bad trade for either player, to be honest. This is absolutely bonkers. Both players 
are building as big armies as they possibly can. Cavaliers have healed up in here. Look at their HP. It is perfect. Hera is at 200 population. MBL is selling wood just now getting handcart. And he is struggling to keep his military numbers up. Although he is going for more of a static offensive uh, push here with these bombards and these castles. So I don't know that he necessarily is very interested at the moment to build a big military as opposed to continuing to gather the resources for structures. I mean, he keeps doing this, which is absolutely terrible. Three Janissaries just freaking die for nothing. They're not elite. He's upgrading his horses with more armor, which means I hope we get to see some Hussars finally for them. Yeah, MBL is playing a little bit too cautious. I think he had a serious lead here for a little bit. And ultimately just didn't capitalize. And now Hera is the one pushing out to the south. Hera is the one pushing in through the center. But oh no, there's so many Bombard Towers. There are so many Bombard Towers. For the love of Age of Empires, get murder holes already. What the actual hell? Bombard's balls. Bombard balls. Missing everything. The Cavaliers do their raiding. They abscond back into the castle. And look at this, a little bit of a sideswipe being set up here for our Turk. Hera, no idea that this is happening. But with these Palisade Walls, might get a quick uh, catch, quick wind of it. Once those units, those Hussars start coming out. MBL is Baroque as a joke. 50 villagers on food. He's got less than 200 food. Hera, 1,000 wood, 1,000 food, 400 gold. But he is finding it very difficult to push into this Portuguese line of defense, but keep sniping these expensive units, whether it's a 400 resource Treb or a 450 resource Bombard Cannon. How many balls did I just see? Four Trebs, a Bombard Cannon. Dear Lord, what is this game? This is an absolute fantastic game so far, but MBL is sitting at a quarter of the army count and his infrastructure is starting to get shelled away at. He's got to get the numbers up, and now he starts to raid. Now, why do I feel like these guys are moving so slow? Is it just me? Did the game slow down? No, it's at 1.7. Why does it feel like these guys are moving like molasses in January? Albert here is going to be a nice little greeting committee for this one. Hussars who takes one swipe and says, ah, F this, thinks better of it, and goes all the way back home. Uh, where are you going? Save some space for the villagers to run through the wall here. <laughs> okay. So these Hussars are going to die to the Halberdiers right as... Oh my goodness! 35 light cav. 49, 50 light cavalry units here for our Portuguese. Uh, okay, they're kind of just standing around all pervy with their swords held up. Just watching this one Hussar take a beating. MBL though continuing to raid four kills, five kills already. If this was Mr. Yo, if this was Hera himself, you best believe there would be Hussars in about six different locations. Now, what MBL has done, which I don't mind, I've harped on for a, a little bit about how MBL doesn't have the military numbers, but with all of this static defense, what he's done is he's bought himself time. So of the five original Bombard Towers, there are still three left. He lost the Siege Workshop. He's losing a bit of housing, a little bit of infrastructure. Not the end of the world, but look at his supply all of a sudden. He's almost at 200. And now Hera is returning the favor with rating of his own. Very high value lumber camp being attacked here. Does Hera now see these? No, he still doesn't know where these attacks are coming from. <laughs> okay, okay. All right, not, not exactly Khmer farmers, but they'll do. Why do I feel like these light cavalry units are moving much, much faster than these Hussars? I don't know why, why it looks like that to my eye. But the players disengage yet again. Halberdier's moving forward. I'm sure Hera very happy to throw some of these away to clear up some space for some more light cav. Janissary's moving very forward. But, I mean, MBL, exactly like I said a minute ago, has bought himself time. His f massive 14 army count is now 50. And he's just now getting Blast Furnace. Oh, no. That upgrade takes a minute, 40 seconds, 100 seconds to, up, uh, to research 
So it's going to be a while before his uh, Hussars are as powerful as they can possibly be. Where is he going? Is he trying to go after the Treb with these? Oh, he's going after the Trebs. He doesn't care about these Light Cav. He thinks his castle, his Bombards, and his Janissaries are enough. He gets one Treb. He gets a second Treb. A third Treb to the south. They unpack. Or rather, they pack. Oh, and their armor just went down. Why did he un uh, Why did he pack them up, I wonder? Could have just left them there. Actually, does their melee armor get better when they pack? Uh, when they unpack? I know their pierce armor jumps up to a massive... Man, what is it, like 20 times the pierce armor? I'll keep an eye on melee. Not something I generally look at. And now the Turkish Hussars are here. They are fully upgraded. Remember, they come with seven pierce armor. Let's take a look comparison of a light cav to a Hussar. The exact same attack. The exact same melee armor. Exact same movement speed. I believe it, Hussars attack 1.9 to 2. So the Turkish Hussar does attack a little bit quicker. Has more HP. Let's see how much more. 15 more HP. So it is, in all respects, the stronger unit... And then by about like 15 or 20% stronger. And now finally the hand cannons are coming out for our Turk who sees a whole bunch of infantry. So figures why the hell not get a nice juicy plus 10 attack bonus against these infantry units. And Harris says, nah, -uh, not on my watch. Goes straight for the hand cannoneers. Villagers just milling around doing nothing. We're an hour into this game. Looks like MBL is raiding the back of Harris base yet again, but too little. He needs to raid a lot more. His army count is down again. His villager count is down. He's down 30 supply, 20 something supply. Fancy move, fancy footwork. Oh yeah, let's take a look. Oh, yeah, so the melee armor actually also actually drops when they're packed or unpacked. And then it jumps to two when they move around. Interesting. So it's a bit of a reverse. When they move around, their pierce armor goes to shit, but their melee armor goes up. Doubles from a massive one to a massive two, which kind of makes sense. I guess when they're on the move, you don't want an enemy raid to go in and then start attacking them. So yeah, look at that. Now it's plus one once it packs up. Okay, come on. Not exactly Japanese Kataparuto Trebs here. Yeah, it jumped up to two. Fancy footwork out of both players maneuvering their cavalry units. One to avoid halberdiers, one to avoid bombard cannons. And that's all she wrote for the Trebs in the forward position. He's got one more Treb. Where is it? It is here to the south, shelling away at a siege workshop together with a bombard cannon friend. But holy moly, now it's Hera who's taking a little bit too long of a breather here. He has an opportunity. He's the one population capped who can go and raid the hell out of this Turkish settlement. Exposed villagers to the north. A lot of exposed villagers here to the back. It looks like Hera did have that idea and loses the unit. And now Hussars. I'm assuming these are just scouting Hussars. If they can find villager kills, fine. But they're just there to figure out what the hell Hera has planned up his sleeve next. And now we're getting two-man saw. Now we're getting crop rotation for our Portuguese whose population doesn't add up. 67 and 105 don't equal 200, which tells me he's got a Fatoria somewhere. There it is. There it is. The Fatoria. This gives him the about approximate effectiveness of nine villagers, I believe. And now Hera doing Hera things. I mean, come on, a Palisade wall? I guess you have four, four stone. What the hell are you going to do? Yeah, so the exploration force here for our Turk gets wiped out. And he's going after the Bombard. Will he get it? He should be able to get it pretty handily. And now he's going to turn around and go after the Treb. But there's a Halberdier here. Ooh, one more ball. And he gets it. And all the aggression to the south has now been stopped. I should say Portuguese aggression. Turkish aggression very much still here. He needs the repair. He needs the repair. Oh, my goodness. That was about as nail-bitingly close as a battle could be. Hera. Ah. I just saw his population jump from 182 to 202. There, no, yeah, there it is. I was good. I, I had a brain fart a moment and thinking, why is he building a wonder? But then I realized that just like the full work shows the blacksmith icon, the Fatoria or Fatoria shows the wonder icon. And by the way, our Turk sees this and is now pushing in. And this is exactly what MBL needed to do uh, about 20 minutes ago. 
before Hera had his settlement hugely protected with bands of roving light cavalry, 41 light cavalry units, but our Turk has 51 Hussars. And for this battle, they do have the high ground. Hera has to disengage here. They attack faster. The attack is the same. They have more HP. Okay, so at this point, the players are probably microing about a thousand thing. I'm very curious to see their PKPMs. And so losing a few Hussars here, and they're not the end of the world. And how did he get into here? Is this walled off? This looks walled off. How did this Hussar get into here? Maybe it's from a previous raid. Oh, goodness gracious. 15 more Hussars move in. But now the Light Caver here. Kill counts for both 500 plus. Look at the villager kills. A dyslexic person's nightmare. One had 125, one had 152. What the hell was that? Why was that cavalry unit trying to run off the edge of the map? What was that? Hussars cleaning up light cap to the center. Hussars cleaning up light cap to the north. Hussars raiding to the back. This is the absolute bonkers power of the Turkish Hussar. Although, at this point, not exactly benefiting from the free upgrade from light cap to Hussar, seeing as how we hit Imperial about a, a five years ago. But, oh, and this is exactly what I was talking about. Hera's base is just incredibly exposed. Another Treb falls. Another Treb falls. No more Trebs. The Turkish army has a Treb and a Bombard Cannon and a single Solitary Janissary. Zero kills for you. It looks like he might be on Patrol Command? Or maybe he just got trained? Oh, look at him hiding behind the castle, behind the Bombard Tower, behind a Hussar trying to fire a few volleys off at these Light Cavalry units as now MBL takes a bite out of the north of Hera's base. And this is exactly what our Turk has to do. He's got to distract Hera. He's got to get Hera to send no fewer than 24, a third of his army supply south so that his one Bombard Cannon, which I guess no longer exists, <laughs> his one uh, Trebuchet can move forward. More and more stables. I'm going to be very curious to see at the end of this game how many stables both players had. I mean, here is a 200 population with 140 or 160. He's got to have three Fatorias now, right? No, just a two. Okay, never mind. And now he discovered the stables finally. What he hasn't seen are these villagers <laughs> still tilling the fields here. MBL has gotten, just gotten so much use out of those three villagers building those stables, tilling those fields. And now he's pushing in yet again. I wonder if these are Cavaliers that Hera built recently. Yeah, it looked like he just finished training a bunch. Or if they're the ones that were uh, hiding inside this castle here. I mean, I want to say we're engaging into a trash war. But one side has hand cannoneers. One side has Cavaliers. The raids are definitely being conducted by trash wars. And look at MBL. Zero stone putting up the last possible line of defense. A palisade at the hour 13 minute mark of the game runs in with even more hussars 20 of them i want to stop here there you go okay <laughs> and get a few of those villagers i mean look at Hera's economy it's just being gutted but the one saving grace for the portuguese is that fatoria again the effectiveness of nine villagers even though it takes up 20 population space Another villager bites the dust. I mean, there's just so much action happening all over the map, but it is all primarily on Hera's side, which is not something we see every day. And that's what I was talking about earlier when MBL tweeted that he wasn't feeling at 100% or he was disappointed in his gameplay. I think he meant competition-wise. But when it comes to these ranked ladder games, I don't really give a rat's ass who wins this game. Both players have just been absolutely tearing into each other. Fantastic style. But MBL specifically, just because he did send out that tweet, that X, well, I still don't know what the hell to call it. I just have to point out that he's played this game epically, and he is still raiding the back of Hera's base, even though his army here to the front is going to get completely wiped off the face of the earth as the hand cannoneers have to retreat. They did a good number of, uh, got a good number of kills here. 
against the halberdiers but the trebs are back the never-ending stream of resources from the fatoria are helping our portuguese stay alive here as these two halberdiers will they get will they get that why is the villager not joining because he doesn't have to he's carrying his big lumber logs this is like uh what's the name of the movie with arnold schwarzenegger where the uh trailer with Alyssa milano and the trailer is him carrying not the trailer the poster is him carrying that giant sod tree I love that movie for one reason and one reason. I should say two reasons. First one is the terrible puns. When Schwarzenegger is on the plane and he elbows that guy in the face and he somehow that just is enough to kill the guy. And then he tells the stewardess that don't wake up my friend. He is dead tired. So that, that's the first thing, the puns. The second thing I love about that movie is that the bad guy is wearing a mesh chainmail shirt at the end and is so incredibly out of shape and he is fighting Schwarzenegger, not in his prime, but like 90% of his prime. Like in the Conan the Barbarian days. Maybe a little bit later, a little bit older. <laughs> and he's fighting Schwarzenegger. And he's wearing the most ridiculous 1980s garment that just looks freaking hilarious. Okay, MBL is starting to throw away way too many Hussars here. He's got 90 villagers on food. It is cleaning up at home. Looks like Hera cleaned up all the raiding to the back of the base, but has not been able to stop the stables from continually pumping out cav uh, cavalry units. And all of a sudden, it has become a one-sided trash war. Our Turk probably wishes he had some kind of trash infantry as opposed to just spearmen, some kind of trash uh, archers instead of just basic skirmishers. Although, uh, I mean... Remember, skirmishers were buffed recently with specifically an attack bonus increase against spearman line units. Oh, this is terrible. Did he even get a single trebuchet? I don't even know. That was an absolute disgusting slaughter, but MB MBL's, he's pouncing. He's pouncing. Hera's a little bit further away here. Ooh, that would be a good time to get the treb to the south. He will get one treb. Will he get a second? No, he will not. That is an expensive get as this <laughs> SR continues. The raids are non-stop here. How many Fatorias do we have now? Still just the two. And both players are now sub-optimal populations. Hera's got 34 villagers. So if his army dies, uh, it's going to take a while for him to replenish. I know the Fatoria works... I think the different resources gather at different rates. It's mostly food and uh, gold. I think one gold a second. But if this army dies, I don't know how quickly he'll be able to replenish it, even with two Fatorias and 36 villagers. Ugh. Oh my god! Oh my god, MBL heard me from uh, a million years away. Six attack spearmen plus three. And these halberdiers have 60 HP, so a plus three attack bonus is not terrible. It's not great, but MBL is again to the back of the base, to the south, to the center. He over here, okay, forget the houses. Who needs to attack these houses? Tries to get another treb, does not get it. Actually did get it. Wow, okay. These are expensive trades for our Turk. And if this was any other civilization that did not have the Fatoria to back up its economy, uh, Hera would be broke as a joke right now. But take a look at this gold count at the top of your screen here where my mouse is 15, 16, 17, 18, 21, 22, 24. This is two gold per second because he's got two Fatorias. So he just needs a minute and a half and he can afford another Treb gold wise. And he must be thinking, why am I seeing skirmishers here? MBL, 108 villagers on food is going to pump out non-stop Hussars. And oh, I wanted to zoom out. Right before these stables all fell, only 11 stables. I mean, I, I see the Trebs are targeting the stables here, which is fantastic. Uh, okay, not too sure about that. I think he was attacking the, the lumber camp. But Hera has yet again cleaned up back home. His 34 villagers have down, gone, uh, his 34 villager count has gone down 10% to 31. Now it's back up to 34. He's buying food. He needs more halberdiers. Our Turk, our Turk has to figure out, sell some of your food and that's, that's no, that's not what he does at all. He trains more and more Hussars. 
I mean, ultimately, if MBL just keeps throwing groups of 30 or 40 Hussars at this army, it will die. But Hera's replenishing it with very cheap units. And here we go. More resources for more Trebs. Like I said, any other civilization right now would be broke. But those two Fatorias are keeping Hera alive here as he now pushes in. And he's the guy with the trebuchets. He's the one with the big fiery flaming balls being fired from 17 range. Town center goes down. Hussars die to the treb. Not something you see every day. But this is a lot of Hussars here. How many? 36. He's got to come up with a way to kill 54 halberdiers. And by the way, their HP isn't terrible. They're only down about 20% of their HP. Are we gearing up towards a big, massive battle here? 10 villager. No, 10 total kills. 6 villager kills. Why is MBL not raiding anymore? Is he planning just a big, full frontal? And that's exactly what's happening here. But these Hussars... Oh, no. These aren't Mongol Hussars with more HP. These aren't Teutonic Hussars with more melee armor. But what they are is pretty damn quick. A third of Hera's Trebs do die. He's left with two. Which means he's going to take out infrastructure. Now, why is he attacking archery ranges? Is my question. You see your opponent is throwing endless waves of Hussars at you. Should you not target... Oh, he's actually targeting the Hussars? <gasps> here we go. Here we go. MBL trying to do some fancy maneuvers as the Cavaliers move north. They are going straight for the economy. I thought for sure against the skirmishers. I'm going to zoom out a little bit because we've got a bit of an engagement here on multiple fronts. And holy shit. Holy shit. Look at that. MBL's got to come up with an answer to these uh, halberdiers. I mean, the, the Cavalier rating, whatever, who cares? They'll get four, five, six villagers, not the end of the world. But what the hell are you going to do against these pikemen? 72 of them! And MBL continues to raid. I don't know how I'm going to be able to get all this in picture in picture as the Cavaliers get drawn to the north here. It looks like the Cavaliers to the center of MBL's base are done. So both players, again, tearing into each other. And all of a sudden, it's dead, deadly quiet. It is a a 30-second uh, a, uh, armistice here in the forward. Both players are playing soccer with each other. It's the holiday spirit. But once the holiday is over, all of a sudden, the battle reanimates like Frankenstein's corpse. And we are back at it as Cavaliers are now dying. This is bad for Hera, but he's got 20 Cavaliers. Oh, that Fatoria. Random Hussar moves in. We'll see how many how many milliseconds before he dies. No, he decides to just abscond out of there. More raiding. More raiding. But in the front? I don't know how you engage into this. This is basically an impenetrable army. MBL's got to get some siege. He's got to get something. Even just a basic scorpion zone out. Some of these halberdiers. Something. At this point, I, I'd settle for seeing just even a mangonel. A basic mangonel. Just soften them up a little bit. Army count. He is down 30 army count. He's ahead. Almost 100 villagers. Not that it matters with the Fatorias out. I mean, what happens here? Both players don't really have armies that can engage into another. I love that MBL backed away just to take the high ground. He might take a pretty good fight here, actually. Remember, the Halberdiers, they're a trash uh, counter unit, so they attack very slowly on a three-second delay. I mean, that was... Uh, he lost his Hussars? But that was as pretty good a battle as MBL could have taken there, to be honest. I don't know why these skirmishes are targeting down Cavaliers. They need to be targeting down Halberdiers. Another Treb falls. Hera's got no Trebs left! Amazing, amazing play out of our Turk who has 33 more Hussars on the way. And all of a sudden, all of a sudden, look at Hera at the top of your screen. He's not training a single unit. What is he saving resources for? He's got a thousand food, 500 gold. Does he think he can just puncture his way through the base with this army? Looks like he is raiding up to the north. Looks like another Fatoria maybe to the back of his base on the minimap. I'll look once this battle is over. Hera's army count is plummeting. It was 50 literally seconds ago. Now it's in the high 30s. Nope, now it jumps up back up to 40 as more and more units are getting trained. But these Hussars are still here. He's still got 80 villagers on food. 
Oh my god, another Fatoria. <laughs> okay, look, your opponent is raiding with halberdiers, not the end of the world. Like I said, the Turk here can afford to lose a few villagers, not too many, don't get me wrong. If you notice something on the minimap, you know, let me ask you and I'll count to 10. And you tell me, is there what's missing from the Turkish base right now? Take a look at the minimap. What do you see is missing? I'll give you a hint. It rhymes with Blaum Blenter. Yeah, he doesn't have a single town center out Turk. So this villager count is basically as good as it's going to get. Okay, not a terrible fight for him as well. Hera is pushing in though, and that Fatoria is just an absolute ridiculous, ridiculous crutch. <gasps> and after an hour and a half of almost non-stop aggression, it is our Portuguese with his 13 Cavaliers. And how many Fatorias at the end of the day? I'm going to zoom out. Three Fatorias. Three gold a second is ridiculous. That takes the day here. And ultimately, I mean, MBL's base, look at this, has been cleared up. This entire area used to have a bunch of Turkish infrastructure on it. And now it has nothing. Just the uh, decomposed bodies of all the units that died. Holy moly, what a game, these two. I mean, we've seen them recently. Just uh, that, that I, I still think it's one of the best games of the year, that Chinese Malay game. But man, is this one very close to that. 920 Hussars, 321 Halberdiers. Just goes to show you the power of a counter unit in Age of Empires. Peak APM. Oh, look at that. Right at the end of the game for MBL. Peak APM for Hera. Also towards the end of the game. This is probably when he was raiding or being raided. Usual 2 to 300. I mean, I, I'm not looking at the bottom of my screen. I don't see want to see how big the economies are. But what do we think? I, I'm, I'm going to guess that they're not terribly disparate. No, never mind. 20 or so. Actually, what is that? 30? 36,000 bigger. So about 20, a little bit over 20% bigger economy for our Turk. Relic gold for our Portuguese, uh, about 2,000 extra gold. But let's take a look at the numbers. Let's dive into the numbers here. 3,000 more wood. I mean, this is this is what kept MBL alive for an hour and a half. The fact that he had almost 40,000 more food. But ultimately, 5,000 less gold and about uh, 1,700. So about three, just under three castles worth of stone holy sh i thought that it was going to be a little bit closer with the uh the fatorias coming out relatively not too late and the conversions even though we saw a lot of uh, monk activity in the earlier stages of the game and when i say earlier in this particular game it obviously means the 30 minute mark which is uh, not early at all six conversions out of an army count of 757 is less than one percent but ladies and gentlemen here we go the numbers we all want to see kill count our Turk has killed 1,046 total units. Our Portuguese, 1313. Era <laughs> should not be walking underneath any ladders, breaking any mirrors, or buying any lottery tickets. Not after this game. 1313. And honestly, I think that extra just under 300 is all the Hussars that MBL just kept throwing at him endlessly. Wave. After a wave, and he ends the game. Is it still just the three Fatorias? Yes, it is. And look at the minimap carved up east and west. Wow. Villager kills 277 for our Turk with all the raiding. I would have loved to see a little bit more raiding a little bit earlier on. But, you know, what can you do? 237. So exactly 40 fewer kills. Villager kills for our Portuguese who Hera not doing his usual raiding. Uh, he did do a good amount of it. I mean, 237 villager kills is not a small amount of rating, but in this particular game, it is MBL who gets more of the villager kills. And let's see how many stables he was left with. 11 stables, 1,000 food, and his opponent... Let's see what Hera had. 12 barracks! 12 barracks, 10 stables, and 1, 2... Three town centers, and like I said, what do you notice about Red? Not a single town center left. I think if he still had a town center and he could train villagers, uh, maybe would have continued on. But 
Actually, let's take a look at his wood because he's already starting to run a little bit low on wood as well. No more wood left to the back. No more wood left to the north. Obviously, the front, he can't get any wood. But here, okay, so he did have a few forests here. Okay, he does, did, blah, he does have, or rather did have, lucky number 13 over here mining, or again, I said mining, lumberjacking that forest. But wow, this game was absolutely epic. And if by any chance MBL not only sees this video, but stays and sticks around long enough to hear this part, uh, I don't know what the hell you're talking about in your tweet. You are playing just fine. You are playing amazing. You are taking on the world's best player. And you are surviving not only an hour and a half, but you are getting more villager kills. And you absolutely wrecked his base initially. And that was just an absolute epic back and forth. These two players just swinging at each other. Uh, and ultimately, however, it is our Portuguese who with the Feitoria... Is there any way, I wonder, in Capture Age to see how many resources were generated by a Feitoria? Trade, tribute sent, gold, relics, max relic? No, not really, right? That's sour. I really do, because this is a discussion of when, if ever, does this structure become viable and cost effective to build i mean at this point Hera, i'm assuming dropped his villager count low enough that he just didn't have to worry about getting raided i think he wanted to focus on the rating i think he wanted to focus on his full frontal attack which by the way isn't that big anymore 17 halberdiers and five cavaliers i think mbl could have held on here for a little bit longer and if not just held on but possibly even have won this game because Hera's base like I said, it's pretty damn exposed. The problem for our Turk, no more sources of gold, barely any more sources of wood. Food he's got to buy the uh, bucket full. And ultimately, I think that's really what damaged him. I think if he could have built, if he had 100 stone to build a town center, he probably could have kept the game going on for a little bit more. Otherwise, look at this. Look how exposed all these villages. Where do you run? There's no castle. There's no town center. You can't garrison into houses, even though some commenter on a video mentioned that it should probably be available to every civilization. Makes sense that villagers can garrison inside houses. And just like with the uh, Khmer, they shouldn't be able to regenerate health, but uh, still should be a feature. I, I, I don't disagree with that. I think that's a good idea to give that availability to most, if not all, civilizations. But ultimately, Hera just withstands the brutal attack of our Turk pushes out, clears up a huge amount of infrastructure and then builds perhaps the most unassailable army I've seen to date when it comes to countering what your opponent is building. Seeing that your opponent is just streaming Hussars all the live long day, he went up to uh, 72 Halberdiers, still survives with 35 of them left in the tank. And even though the army counts are not that dissimilar, ultimately... This is uh, the stage of the game an hour and a half in when players are tired. Players, they, I don't know if they want to go to sleep. They have to go to the bathroom. There's a tournament happening. I don't know what, a million and one reasons, but ultimately it's whoever runs out of gas first. And with three Feitorias, it is not our Portuguese who runs out of gas first. It is our Turk who puts up a serious fight, but ultimately it is Hera who is victorious, but truly GG to both players. Did you enjoy this video? Check out these other clips and make sure to subscribe and enable notifications so that you're notified of my latest uploads.